This is JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, Executive Vice President at JSA, coming to you from ITW 2020, the virtual ITW. And joining me today is Mr. Michael Kearns. Michael is the co-founder and chief strategy officer at Amartis. Michael, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you, Dean. Uh, nice to talk to you today. Outstanding. Michael, thank you. Th thank you very much, Michael. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. For our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell them a little bit about Amartis? Okay, so Amartis was uh, founded in 2003. We're a specialist uh, company in orchestration and automation for network and cloud. Uh, we deal with the business and technical negotiation software solutions. Uh, we work with uh, providers and uh, network providers, cloud providers, uh, application providers, and also uh, with the vendors. Uh, so we have a very unique perspective. We work across the whole ecosystem of, of, of the software automation. Uh, we are very uh, much uh, proponents of open, programmable, uh, DevOps style uh, uh, network transformation. And, uh, you know, we're very, uh, much uh, working actively working within the MEF and the and the TM Forum and uh, CBAN organizations to drive forward the automation transformation of the industry. Excellent, Michael. Thank you. So I understand that you dropped some pretty significant news at the virtual ITW just this week. Um, can you tell our viewers a little bit about um, Embrace uh, and um, and the news that you had uh, just come out this week? Sure, yeah, delighted to do that. Yeah, we've, we've been working for the past couple of years on, on a product concept uh, through our engagement with the industry, through MEF and with providers on uh, what we call the East-West uh, orchestration between providers, so it's the inter-provider negotiation. You know, this is a really hot topic right now because, uh, uh, you know, global enterprises, as they move their uh, IT, ICT environments and networks to uh, adopt SD WAN and have and have global reach. They want on-demand services as they take up uh, multi uh, multi-cloud type ICT environments. They need to have instant access to be able to connect their workforces to the actual digital assets and digital resources that they have globally. And uh, you know, traditionally, this type of activity was very static in nature, very difficult to uh, negotiate between providers, took a lot of time, and therefore wasn't very much compatible with the on-demand requirements of the enterprise. So we've been working with the standards bodies and with the providers to automate the negotiation of these services first. And that's, uh, uh, it's actually a departure for us as a company. We, we typically have worked in the north-south automation, so that's automating an individual provider. Uh, so this is something that we think is really a growing demand as we go forward uh, in the industry and very much uh, in line with the, the requirements of the enterprise in the future. So we're delighted to have announced the product. Yeah. No, congratulations, Michael. That's, uh, that's great news. Um, a, a word that you just said was future. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, but and specifically the future of transformation and even more specifically the future of network transformation. Now I know uh, that Amartis is, uh, is fast-tracking uh, network transformation and doing so successfully. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the secrets to, uh, to your transformation and about the, uh, the way that you expedite that transformation with regard to the networks? So, so we see many ways in which the network transformation is taking place, but let, let's talk about how, you know, the best approach is the best practices for the transformation. I think uh, traditionally uh, the operators have, have bought a lot of software solutions from OSS, BSS vendors. They found themselves uh, locked in one way or another into those solutions, which meant that it was quite slow for them to evolve their, their actual uh, processes. You know, it was quite a heavy, big project for them to be able to do that. So, uh, you know, one big transformation that's happened is the learning some lessons from the cloud providers from the OTT players. So the network providers can adopt this DevOps style approach to transformation. Uh, they can, if they incorporate that with uh, some of the standards work, they can really speed up the, the introduction uh, and, of services, how they operate those services. 
they can take back some of that control that they that they had uh, relinquished to maybe third parties or outsourced, uh, you know, in order to cost cut in the past. And in order to be more agile, if they take that back in and they achieve and they uh, acquire the right uh, technologies and the right approaches and processes for designing and rolling out and operating services, then you know they can be fast and they can move fast. And this is what they need to do in order to be able to meet the demands of the enterprise customers and the consumers that the, the, their customers. You know? Very good. Look, I, I love it. I love it. Let's let's stay on that kind of prediction um, trajectory that we have going on. Why don't you talk to our viewers a little bit about you know what's on the horizon with regard to orchestration and automation of the network and, and cloud. Yeah, so if we take our, our, our example, I think a lot of uh, our providers today are already on a journey to automate their internal systems. You know, this has been around for some time. We have a, a lot of providers down the road in that process. As we look a bit wider than that, then we sort of say, okay, how do, how do people interface with those systems? How do their customers interface with the systems that they have? How do their partners interface so that they can open up their network to a global audience, a global customer base, a global supply chain. Uh, I, and you know, we, we, we think that there's a lot of new technologies that are even gonna enable this. So traditionally, uh, you know, the providers in our space, the wholesale uh, kind of providers would be offering, you know, very much the similar kind of private line type services. But we've got things like SD-WAN now, which has come in. And SD-WAN is, is offering the enterprise some freedom from the, the VPN type scenario, allowing them to use different types of underlay services, such as IP broadband in conjunction with private line services. But SD-WAN is on demand, so you know the overlay is on demand, but the underlay is still is still lagging behind. So we need to uh, give the automation to the providers so that they can really speed up the whole process of delivering the underlay and, and be more on demand. So, so the very first step has been that the uh, providers themselves have been investing a lot in the internal automation of their, of, of their inter internal systems. This is very critical. Uh, it's very critical that they move away from the, you know, sort of systems, the legacy systems, the BOSS systems that, you know, they relied on third parties to actually uh, deliver the services. They need to take back the control of the, uh, of the, uh, of the environment, be able to introduce uh, services in DevOps timeframes, you know, learn from the lessons of the, cloud, the large uh, cloud providers who have been able to uh, move, move quickly in this space. Um, and then I think once they have, have, have achieved that, the next big thing is to open up their offering to the world in many different ways. And, and I think the Embrace uh, product that we have introduced Will allow them to do that. It will allow them to engage in a global supply chain, offering their services to a global marketplace, um, and this is very critical. And then within that, I think there are several steps. So there's first of all allowing the on-demand negotiation of those services between them and their and their partner providers or their end customers, and uh, then there's offering the capability to deliver those services in real time on their networks or in their clouds. Now we know cloud providers have had this capability for some time, but the network lags behind uh, that capability. And I think as we move forward and we look at, you know, new technologies that are coming on board, like 5G access, like Wi-Fi, you know, we have this critical uh, opportunity now to move away just from the fiber, the fixed fiber or the, or, you know, line that, that has, has an ordering time, has a time to dig dig up the roads and, and make and make connections. So it sometimes slows down the process. You know, now we can really deliver on-demand services. In the cloud, we have Edge Cloud. Edge Cloud is going to play a real really important part in delivering latency for the network, but really high quality applications to uh, for for the enterprise that they need. So all of these need to work together. They need to be globally accessible. They need providers need to be able to come together very easily. Uh, seamlessly to partner for short-lived services to be able to support the support the enterprise. So I think that the following st the stage beyond that is again hyper automation of industries, you know, autonomous driving, industry 4.0, smart cities. All of these uh, need access to a lot of different uh, digital resources and and need to connect the people and the machines, and they need to do it in real time. 
So, and they need to operate in real time without the human intervention. So I think this is the future. Maybe the latter is, is four or five years out for us, but it's something we need to develop the systems and put the systems in place today for that, you know? Yeah, you know, honestly, I feel like I should have booked four hours for this one today because there's so much we could unpack with all of that. Unfortunately, sure. we don't have that kind of time. I know you're a busy guy. So, um, um, Michael, for, uh, for our viewers that do want to learn more, where should they go? So uh, if you go to www.amartis.com forward slash embrace, embrace is the name of our product. It's about bringing part, uh, uh, part providers together, enabling to, them to do business in seamless uh, fashion. Uh, we have loads of resources there and we're building out more and more resources now that we've launched the uh, embrace product uh, this week. You know? Excellent. Michael, thank you very much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Delighted to talk to you also. Thank you. You got it. And thank you viewers for watching JSA TV and tuning into JSA podcast. We'll see you soon.